Sierra Senior Citizens Forum. I'm Janice Woods, your host, and uh, I'm associated with Benefits for You 2 Insurance Services, where we specialize in uh, Medicare Supplemental, Medicare Advantage, and prescription drug plans. We also do health insurance plans. So, but today I'm with my guest, Nancy Wright, and um, Nancy is a, is a health coach. That's correct, Nancy? Yeah, I'm a master certified health coach or holistic health coach. Yep. Yeah. And she's been doing this for, since 2016. Mm -hmm. And her specialty is loving to work with people with type 2 diabetes. Um, she does one-on-one -on -one coaching. She does a group coaching and uh, online classes. Uh -huh. Okay, and uh, I've read some of her uh, comments that are about her, and everybody says she's so sweet and supportive. It's really great. And uh, but we're not going to talk about diabetes today. We're going to talk about another subject that both Nancy and I find that it, that it can be very complicated for people, and that's those labels on our food and on our beverages that we're taking in. And we're going to talk about how those labels can affect your health. Okay. And what they mean. So I'm sitting here right now with a bottle of, of roasted garlic. I have something that I know most people love. And that's instant oatmeal or some form of oatmeal. And I also have bite-sized shredded wheat. Now, my son, who happens to be a vegan, loves bite-sized many, many, yeah. <laughs> many wheats, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, that fits in his diet, okay? So, so Nancy, tell us. How did they, we start off with labels? Well, yeah, I was going to tell you a little bit about me and my story was when my daughter was three years old, she was diagnosed with high functioning autism or Asperger's, they call it. And then fast forward. So I knew very early on that food was medicine, right? And so that's what got me interested in the Dr. Sears Wellness Institute, where they teach you on health and nutrition. But a big part of it was label reading. And would you believe it, Janice, that I had leaky gut food sensitivities and all kinds of digestion issues. So I would like scream at the Trader Joe's food saying, what the heck is in this food? So I knew I had to help my daughter. And once I was able to feed her better, because a lot of kids on the spectrum have food aversions, meaning they may not like the textures of some foods or they like the same thing, chicken McNuggets or mac and cheese and pizza and, you know, all that kind of stuff, which isn't always the healthiest. And I could not get my, and she's now 18, but when she was three, I could not get her to eat anything that was green, like, um, you know, green pea, she would scream, scream, scream. So once I went through this course, and I really learned a lot about how food can really heal the body and the brain and, you know, sticky stuff in the mouth is sticky stuff in the brain and sticky stuff in the tissues. She, we were able to pull her out of special ed in fourth grade. And the teacher said, what did you do differently? And honestly, all I did was I fed her. And I gave her some omega-3s, which we know is really good for the brain and whatnot. So there was never medication. It was, or back then it wasn't, it was just food. And then I thought, well, there's something to this. And I became very, very passionate. And I had, when I was younger, I rode horses, I still do, but I drank a lot of sodas. And I didn't know, because my parents didn't know, I just put the money in the vending machine and then popped on my horse. And I would have about three Mountain Dews a day. Well, I'm almost 60 years old, but back then, in my earlier years, I didn't realize how much that can catch up with you. And I got dental work to prove it, but it really affected my gut really badly. And it led to a lot, it kind of snowballed into a lot of other things. Finally, I was able to heal my gut. It took years. So, okay. I think so it we're was, talking was, about the gut. Not everybody will know what you're talking about when, when it comes to the gut. Okay. And so that's your stomach. My stomach, yes, I'm yeah. sorry. My gut, they call it the microbiome. Micro just means um, tiny, tiny, tiny. Biome means life. So, you know, there's lots and lots of bugs in your microbiome. <laughs> right, because I know for me, I've been exposed to uh, 
If you take an antibiotic, you should be taking a probiotic, right. which all has to do with the good bacteria in your stomach. Okay? That's right. That's so I want exactly to make right. sure everybody is on this knows what we're talking about. And if they you do, have, you want to have more good it. weeds than bad weeds. That's right. That's how I think of it in your gut. Yeah. Uh -huh. your gut. So your gut, it's real important that you're having the right balance of good bacteria versus the bad bacteria. Okay. That's right. And the mind and the gut are very closely related and connected. I should say the gut's the second brain they're saying. And so that's that's definitely true. I've experienced that. So yeah, you fix right. the gut, you fix the anxiety, or you lower the anxiety, which is what I had. Yeah, still have, but it's not right. Like, yeah, I don't. I don't think people realize what you are, what you eat, and what they ate. <laughs> and what they ate? Okay. Right. Yeah. I mean, they don't realize that. No, and, and food companies are so sneaky, and they. There's a great book out called Feeding You Lies. I, I hate, I mean, it's it's a little scary to read, but it really has a lot of truth in it, Feeding You Lies. And it basically talks about how the food companies are putting bad things in our food because they always put their profit in front of our health. And we wonder why one out of two is pre-diabetic now. And I believe it's one out of three that's diabetic. But we are in an epidemic of diabetes, you know, obesity, di they would call it diabetes. And now they're calling Alzheimer's, that's on the rise, that's type three diabetes. So it's it's fascinating to me of what's happening with our food system. And that's why I'm so passionate to you know, help people label read and eat healthier. I mean, it just it is it is so important. I mean, popping a pill isn't always the answer. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm glad you said that because I just talked about that yesterday. And, and the way I was trained is you want to teach the skills, not the pills. Not you the pills. Ask, that's right. No pills or less pills, more skills. That's what we say. Less pills, more skills. Yeah. Right. And, that, and, and the skills are what you eat and knowing what you eat. And more than that, it's, you know, it's lifestyle. It's It's moving and meditating and social wellness, intellectual wellness, environmental wellness, but yes, absolutely. Um, nutrition does have a big part of it. Yeah. So, you know, the doctors are used to saying, oh, you have this symptom, you know, they diagnose and say adios, but they're not, <laughs> they're not really teaching you because they didn't have the training of nutritionists. Oh, wait a minute. If you eat this, this can help fix your gut. You know, diabetes, one of the best foods a diabetic can eat is artichoke, believe it or not. It is artichoke. And, um, you know, when you go to the grocery store, I try to think of it like the green light area is the perimeter of the store, the produce, the, the you know, vitamin K and asparagus and, you know, vitamin C and oranges and, out, you know, the doctors right and have an apple a day, keep the doctor away. That was really true. <laughs> you know, garlic and onions, prebiotic for your, for your gut, your stomach. So you can really go to food as medicine. Or if you eat well, you probably have less problems is what I said. I'm not saying you're not going to have any, but, you know, there's a, there's a place for doctors, but it's really up to you. I think chefs chefs could really be the doctors, right? You know? Yeah. But we live in the of the world of processed foods. Yes, we instead do. Of, instead of eating in that produce section, as what you two were talking about, we're eating, instead of making a tomato sauce yourself and you know what's in it, because we live such busy lifestyles. That's what right. Do we, eat? We, we go and we buy a bottle of something. Mm -hmm. Right. You're absolutely right. We're busy and they're great at marketing product too. And I've got some misleading claims to show you, but right. you know, that's why I say stay out of the middle aisles. I don't want to call them the cardiac aisles, but if you eat the dead food, you may be dead. You know, you want to eat the food that grew on a plant, not that grew in a plant. Eat the food that God made, tomatoes, avocados, lemons, limes, apples, not the food that man made, the processed uh, omega-6s, which are so inflammatory. And that's part of the reason we've got arthritis and a lot of other problems, autoimmune and all that. Yeah. So, okay. so one of the things I want to do, because we eat so much processed food, the government, and I don't remember when, okay, started started asking the manufacturers to put information about the foods on the labels, okay? So do you know when that happened? Can you tell when, me? When, I'm sorry, say that again, when the... Okay, 
when we went to eating so much processed foods, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, I remember, I'm in the age group where I remember when the miracle of a, of a Swanson TV dinner came out, okay? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All I right. remember that TV dinners, yeah. Or, or or macaroni and cheese in a box, okay? Yeah, that's right. Okay, because I come from you know when that would have been new. <laughs> mm, I ate TV ate TV dinners too. Yeah, I don't have the exact date of when they started putting that on labels. There's a good movie on Netflix. They talk about that, and I don't know that the era of that or the date of that. It's called Fed Up. F E D U P. Fed okay. Up. Okay. They do go through that, and I just don't know off the top of my head when that is. But over time, they have gotten really smart on mass production and um, throwing a lot of bad stuff in there. Because like I said, it's all about profits and, you know, showing profits. You know, Kellogg's and Junior Mills, they're one of the worst. They're one of the worst. Yeah. So, so how, okay, on the labels, I mean, I'm looking at this bottle. Okay. And I'm seeing so much information on the bottle. Okay. So I know this, they're telling me that, that this is roasted garlic with no sugar. Okay. Okay. It, then I'm looking on the back of it and then, oh, then of course on the front of it, it says uh, non-GMO verified. Okay. Okay. That's good. Okay, so there's no weed in that. Is that what that means? Yeah, no. Yeah, they have to have a label on it. That's good. Read me. If, if read me the uh, ingredients. If there, the, here's a little tips on label reading. Ten or less. If the less ingredients, the better. Less is best. You always want words you can pronounce. If it sounds like a science experiment, don't buy it. Yeah. And if the percentage is. Um, if the percentage, oh, less is best, words you can pronounce, the daily value percentage, if that's more than 20%, it's too high. What's the percentage on that for the sugar? Back to that, because I want to read some other stuff that's on okay. the bottom. Okay? Go ahead. We're going to get to that. We'll see if they can pronounce it. Here, which means a lot to me, because I have been a vegan, and okay. my, son, my son tries being a vegan, because he lives in Brazil, so I don't know how he does that, okay? <laughs> so he's a vegan, and this is here for him, okay? And then it says it's, it says it's low fat. Okay. okay. That's just a lot of stuff on here. Now I'm getting to the part where you're that's, talking about. That's the truth right there. Yeah, because the marketing, they can say anything on there. Mm -hmm. Is the truth. That's right. So let's go to this because this gave me a lot of information and other packaging even has more information on it. Yeah, the, the more ingredients, it's probably not so good for you, especially if you see those ingredients you cannot pronounce. Yeah, well, I mean, because I can pick up this package and I can look at it and I know it's kosher mm -hmm. by looking at the package. Mm -hmm. So if you happen to keep kosher, mm -hmm. that's important. I'm looking at this package on the front and it's telling me that it's heart heart healthy. I see the heart. Uh-huh. So right. Cheerio cereal. Yeah. yeah. So it's making me feel like, oh, if I buy this, this is going to be good for my heart. Right. That's exactly right. So we can go through that package if you want. You can tell me what's on it. And right. It's just real, it's really crazy. So there's just a lot of different information that different packaging has. Mm -hmm. You have some, and here's our good old standard basic oatmeal, mm -hmm. which has information on it too. Mm -hmm. That's a good package. Doesn't have, how many ingredients are in the back? I bet there's only one or two. Doesn't it say oats? Those are oats. And it's just one ingredient. So that's good. Now, I know for someone who has to watch the blood sugar, you probably have to be careful on and that. I like this. Like you said, this has less ingredients compared to, hold on, <laughs> compared to this oatmeal that has a lot more ingredients on it. And you can't pronounce all those ingredients because I can tell from here. <laughs> right. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah. And, you know, just to, just to say something on that, my husband, you know, he's not quite on board with label reading, 
and he will give my daughter instant oatmeal. And I look at that and see, it's the word instant that they like, right? And when I flipped it over, I said, yep, there's more intent ingredients. We can't, and it said low sugar or some misleading claim. And then I bought her the bag you're holding. And I said, there's one ingredient in that bag and there's like 12 more. Which one are you going to choose? That's what I mean. Less is best. And the reason that's so important is when you start putting things in your body and sugar and, and that, things that you shouldn't be eating, that's how we get sick over time. It may not happen in the 20s or so, but over time, it will catch up with you. I Can I share with you Log Cabin that I'm holding? Oh, good old Log Cabin. Okay, so if you if you can tell on the front, there's a yellow tag that says no high fructose corn syrup. But so this is all marketing, which I hate to say, but it's a lie. When you flip over the back, I know you probably can't see it from here, but corn syrup is the first ingredient. So why is it that they say no high fructose corn syrup here, but you flip it over and corn syrup is the first ingredient. And then there's a, a word called sodium hexamethyl. I can't even pronounce it, right? So I'm like, don't put this in your body. And high fructose corn syrup is a, there's 250 names of sugar. This is one of them. But this is worse than table sugar because it really spikes your blood sugar and it leads to obesity. And it, it actually can lead to diabetes and a lot of other bad stuff too. So we really will caution you. But the FDA doesn't regulate it, Janice. So they don't regulate labels. And there's also label loopholes. That's a whole other story. So I don't have my, um, my maple syrup with me, but Costco has the Kirkland brand maple syrup and it has one ingredient. That's the syrup you want, you know? Wonderful. Well, that, 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 so we can go back to this oatmeal right here. So what <laughs> I'm looking at, I don't know. I hope people can see the label, okay? Yeah, it uh, has one ingredient. I see it. It has oatmeal. It has, oh, I see one ingredient, I think, right? It says, it's, it says organic whole grain oats. Yep. That's, That's what you want. one ingredient, okay? Right. Now, when I look at this, this box of oatmeal. There you go. Look I at see. all of this stuff. Yeah, there's more than 10. This is your vitamins that they're saying that. Yeah. I never look at the vitamins. I just always look at the ingredient. I always tell you the truth serum is in the ingredients. That's the most important thing. If I had a yellow highlighter, I'd be highlighting that paragraph where it says whole grain rolled oats. And by the way, Janice, sugar is the second ingredient. So a little tip here is I would say if, if the first three ingredients is sugar or salt, you're mainly eating sugar or salt. Now, if you, I'm looking at that right now, sugar is the second ingredient. So you're eating sugar for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. You're eating and then you throw a banana on there, you're eating more sugar. Well, if it's like a right banana. Well, I'm, I'm looking at the carbohydrates on there. It's 12%. Okay. 32 grams. So here's another thing is. I mean, if you have to watch it, if people have to watch their blood sugar, well, first of all, I wouldn't be eating that if you have to really, I mean, I'm not, I don't have to watch my blood sugar. I still wouldn't eat that. I wouldn't put any sugar in my body, but you have to be careful. Now, when I look at the, is there sugar in there? Okay. Sugar, I'm looking at the carbs, 12%. That's not bad, but I don't like any number over 20. And so it says includes 12 grams out of sugar. That's 23%. 20 is where you cut it off. If it's over 20%, forget it. So it's too high in sugar. And let me give you a little tip. Pretend that was 24 grams of sugar. Because the food manufacturers are so clever, Janice, they put things in grams. It should be in teaspoons because they don't want us to know it's teaspoons because they want us to be confused because they want us to buy it so they make more money. So let's pretend it was 24%. I'm just rounding it off. 24 divided by four because that's how you get the teaspoons of sugar is six. So if you were to take the sugar packet or sugar cube and you pour it in a clear, uh, you know, a glass, a clear glass, you're, you just now drink um, six grams of sugar, six teaspoons of sugar. The limit for women is six teaspoons of sugar. The limit for men is 10. Actually, it's a little less, but I'll round it off to 10. Do you see what I mean? And that's just in one serving. And we wonder why we have such a problem with diabetes and pre-diabetes. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people don't realize that carbohydrates converts to sugar. That's right. That's right. And, and in my one of my presentations that I do a lot of, I do a lot of webinars and workshops. I tell people one of the biggest mistakes people make, this was actually my girlfriend. 
one bagel is equal to 11 teaspoons of sugar, one bagel. Can right. you imagine? And then imagine fast forward throughout the day. Let's say you have a candy bar, you have a soda, you're well over your limit, right? So you're right. Carbohydrates break down the sugar. Absolutely. And, and this doesn't even talk about adding the milk. <laughs> yeah. So see if it's in a box, that's why we say if it's in a box, you really shouldn't. Buy. I mean, I buy box food, but it's, it's got anywhere between one to three ingredients in it. I mean, this, so just I mean, to take when, the guesswork out of it, eat the food God made, not that man made. Man made that. <laughs> but when I'm reading this, it says total sugar, 12 grams, okay? Uh huh. Which you're converting to teaspoons. Well, okay. you look at the percentage. Yeah, well, I think the percentage is 23%. That's the number you want. You take 23, divide it by four. And then it says includes, which I'm adding, includes added sugars of 23%. So yeah. they're saying 12, 12 grams plus another 12 grams, that's 24. Right. And you divide that by four. 23%. That's... Right. Scary. <laughs> it is. Yeah. It really, and, you know, and I think that's just for breakfast, Janice. But, you know, you, you have to be careful. And let's say they have a smoothie and it's loaded with sugar. I had a little bit of high blood sugar. I was drinking acai berry uh, um, smoothie because one of the first things I coach people is when they have blood, high, high blood sugar is I try to get them to throttle off of liquid sugar. And ice cream, I know is hard, but you can make nice cream. I had to break up with Ben and Jerry myself. <laughs> Believe me, I know it was not easy. But it's the liquid sugar. We really want to try to throttle you back. You know, the doctor that trained me, Dr. Sears, he's a world-renowned pediatrician. If you were to walk into his office in Orange County, he actually takes a soda bottle, like Powerade, okay, I'm holding this, and he wraps, he, he puts a tag around it that says, this is diabetes in a bottle, because he's trying to shock his patients and say, listen, this is diabetes in a bottle. And I thought that was really smart, you know? Okay. I need to take a break right now, Okay. And I'm going to be back with Nancy Wright. And as you can tell, we're full of lots of great information, but um, we'll be back in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. Here at Benefits for You 2 Insurance Services, we believe knowledge is power when it comes to selecting the correct healthcare and Medicare insurance. Please contact us at healthcareoptions at benefitsforyou2.com or call us at 310-245-0332. Hi, welcome back to a Senior Citizens Forum. I'm Janice Wood, your host, and I'm here with my guest, Nancy Wright, who is a, uh, a food coach, a nutritionist coach, and she has a, a, a real passion for her subjects and what she does. Uh, I learned about her daughter, who took her into the world of food and what uh, and what food she ate affected her daughter's uh, health conditions um, from from the time she was young and realized what food she was e also eating was not good for her own personal self and her growth and how she's learned to uh, actually I read this in her bio through eating correctly she's able to keep her weight down which I know all the ladies love to keep their weight down, <laughs> okay? So we were talking about labels earlier, and now I wanna talk about, and I am talking about health conditions, but when you're looking at labels and you're looking at it, I know I started looking at the labels on the back, I think when I was diagnosed with diabetes. Mm -hmm. And I was told that I had high cholesterol mm -hmm. and the two, and I started looking at those labels at that time. Mm -hmm. So I think most people aren't going to pay attention to those labels until they find it's necessary. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's usually kind of a scare or something. That's right. Where they, it shakes them up a little bit. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you start learning, you start learning about different things and what, what affects your body? So what other health conditions? Your heart, that would be a big one. That's right. That's why they always say, you know, up your fiber, lower your heart disease. That's exactly right. And up your fiber will also help with, um, it will help 
lower your blood sugar as well. So that's why you want to eat fruits with fiber on it, um, that kind of thing. But getting back to what you said, you know, the incidence when your blood sugar is is a little elevated or elevated, the incidence of everything else goes up. And you just said it, LDL, bad cholesterol. Cholesterol, mm -hmm. there's some other things as well. So that's why when you go to the doctors, waist size is really important. And if you want to talk about, you know, health a little bit and health conditions, the doctors are always going to check you on your blood sugar because they know the, how incredibly common it is, Janice. But the waist size for a woman should never be more than 35 inches. 35 inches. And for a man, well, your hips can be 40 because we give birth. But for men, their waist size should not be more than 40, 40 inches and their hips as well. Because if you're higher than that, then the risk of a heart attack goes up, goes up. And they don't like the fat around the, or they call it the visceral fat. They don't like the fat around, around the organs. So they, that's why they, you know, want to know what your waist size is. Mm -hmm. So when you're saying 35, uh -huh. 35 inches for a woman, so does that make a difference if that woman is under five feet or that woman it's is? the waist size. No, it's the waist size. And you just take a measuring tape and go one inch above your navel. It's the waist size. It's way. So that means if you're uh, six feet tall and you're a woman, it's still 35 inches. It's yes, it's the waist size. That's actually right. Very uh -huh. interesting. Yeah, because they don't like visceral fat just means fat in your organs. And they that that's the harmful fat. They don't like that. They don't like that. We want to eat fat, but we want to eat the good fat. So like the saturated fat, I mean, sorry, like the unsaturated fat. So olive oils and, and nuts. And Greek yogurt, avocado is a terrific fat. By the way, that's a really good fat if you have digestive issues. So that I'm not looking at this box, okay? So on this box right here, we're talking about polyunsaturated fats mm -hmm. versus monosaturated fats. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not a nutritionist, so I couldn't talk about that. Mono means one, one fat. That's why avocado is a monosaturated fat. That's a good fat. I don't know. I, I couldn't get into poly because I wasn't trained on that at all. It just means more than one fat. But that box is bad news because it's a box. <laughs> it's a box. That's what I tell people, don't buy the box. You know, buy <laughs> the bag or the oatmeal or go to the bins and get stuff, you know, or go, you right. want to buy the food that doesn't have a label on it. You know, those little cheap tear down bags when you try to get the avocado or the tomatoes or the apples in it or the broccoli, that's what you want. There's no label on it. <laughs> Or when you get oatmeal out okay, of the but yeah, but you know a fresh vegetable. I'm so do those bag frozen bags of vegetables, are they gonna have the labels on it? I never yes, I don't they will. yes, they will. Uh-huh. And I think there's a couple of good ones. I mean, if I you know, I do buy the frozen bag of rice at Trader Joe's because I always forget to buy rice. I'd rather buy rice and throw it in my instant pot, but Nancy forgets a lot. So when I go to Trader Joe's, there is jasmine rice, brown rice, and it's one ingredient. That's okay. That's what I'm saying. Boxes are okay, but watch how many ingredients. That's the key. That's the ticket right there. You know, 10 or less is not great. Five or less is better. Just the less, the best. That's that's my best advice to you. I like you know, the box because it says instant, and there's your red flag right there. Instant's misleading. That's not instant. And it's well, maybe it's instant, but it's instant with a lot of bad stuff. And I know that because it's got more than 10 ingredients and it's got words you can't pronounce. <laughs> So it's automatically, it's, if I were to do a pantry makeover, I'd put a red sticker on that, say it doesn't pass. Now, go ahead and tell me about that one. So I'm going to tell you about this one. We talked a little bit about it at, at, at the first part of our show. Okay. We know that this is great for vegans. Okay. Uh, we know it's supposed to have be low in fat because it says it's low in fat. All right. And we, we're, I'm taking for granted that it's low in sugar. So we're going to go back to what we talked about in the first part of the show, where it talked about total carbohydrates at 10 grams. Okay. Okay. And then it, it says that it's 3%. Then dietary fiber too. But here we're talking about sugar, uh, sh more sugar again. And it says five grams at zero. Five grams. Okay, that's good. And how it's many? Not bad. How many ingredients? So, so I'm going to tell you. 
that's good to look at, but the ingredients is, is I mean, in my opinion, it's, it's the most important. How many ingredients are there? Is there more than three? How many ingredients are in here? There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 14 that I, I'm I'm sure okay. I got, okay. Okay, now is sugar or salt within the first three ingredients? Does it say sugar or salt within the first three ingredients? Uh, it says, um, no. Well, actually salt is called sodium. Is that the third ingredient or fourth it's ingredient? The third ingredient and it's 40, 400 milligrams. It's gotta taste good. <laughs> Okay, so if you look at the sodium, I have a feeling that's going to be above 20%. Take a look at the percentage of sodium. It's 17%. Okay, it's close. It's close. So if somebody has high blood pressure, mm, be careful on that one because 20% is the cutoff. That's actually not too bad. That's not too bad. I'm looking in here because it talks about fats, okay? So saturated fat zero trans fats zero but then i'm going in here and it has or i got a good organic expeller processed soybean oil that's an omega-6 so i mean if i were to pick that apart i probably would pass it but it's really not bad sunflower oil is they call that a yellow light. They call that a yellow light. So that would be like a yellowish to red if I had a sticker on that. Now, remember, we need fat because our brain, we need 60% fat for our brains to work. If somebody calls you a fat head, it's a compliment, but we need the right kind of fats. You don't, you want two thirds unsaturated fat, one third saturated fat. That's like your chicken and zero trans fat. So that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I found interesting on this bottle is that I can pronounce. Yeah, there you go. Ingredients, okay. There you go. I mean, I would eat that if I had to, I would eat it. Yeah. Would eat that, okay. <laughs> but if I look at this box of shredded wheat and there, the information is on the side, mm -hmm. but this has two ingredients in it. Okay. I bet it's high in sugar. One of this whole wheat and the other one I is whole, excuse me, is mixed. I can't pronounce it. Tacoferols. 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 It's tacoferols. Yeah. That's okay. a restorative. I have yeah. no idea what that is. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You can't pronounce it. Um, can't... What is the sugar? What is the percentage of gram on the sugar? On the sugar? Uh actually it's really good what does it say it says zero negative one gram okay and well then you add milk to whatever it, it goes up okay they're not frosted those wheats are they they're but, not frosted. but the carbohydrates are 48 grams that's high well, what's the percentage next to the grams? It's got to be... Um, it's 17. If okay, you no it's on the border. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, you know, if you really have to watch your blood sugar, you know, watch that one. Yeah. 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 I would give that like a CD, an orange to a red light. Yeah. 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 So the other one, when you add milk to it, it goes up to 54 grams of carbohydrates. Yeah. So then it's going to be too much, right? That yeah. turns into 19%. Right. Which is getting high. So, so you got it. Yep. And yeah. I cannot even imagine eating a eating that shredded wheat without milk. <laughs> right. That would taste like cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> totally is gonna taste like cardboard. Oh, it would be terrible. You know, there's a really good website, and I want your viewers to know it. It's called diabetesfoodhub.org, and they've got great recipes for, for people with diabetes diabetesfoodhub.org and okay. they have recipes online it's very oh, my goodness. can you uh email that to me so yes, we I can will. have that for people they can uh i was so going to find yeah. that okay 
I was going to do that for you. Uh huh. This hasn't been too bad on the ingredients. And I know there's worse ingredients than this. But you're, if, you're I this a professional. Oatmeal, <laughs> if I look at the oatmeal, it has all kinds of things that I can't pronounce. <laughs> right. right. So Janice, congratulations. You're the, you are a, a master, a professional pantry makeover reader now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, and I've always gone, gone if, I, if I look at the ingredients and I can't pronounce them, I don't want them in my body. There you go. That's right. That's right. You know, our our grandparents, our parents and grandparents, they ate a lot healthier because the food, you know, I, I don't know if there was Swanson's or TV Dennis, you know, they ate more from the earth. That's why I tell people, eat the food God made, you know, the fish in the ocean, the chicken, the, the stuff that's grown, Greek eat the food God made, not that man made, you know, and the food that grows on a plant and not in a plant, like that instant oatmeal. <laughs> instant oatmeal, right. You got I, it. But again, we live in, we live in a, a world of fa eating fast foods. Yes, that's right. Eating out of, cont eating out of processed foods, out of jars, out of, out of bags, out of uh, boxes. I mean, oh, those food companies got out so of, smart. Out yeah, of cans. Like, I don't right. even have the canned stuff in front of me. So, like, if you're eating uh, fruit instead of eating an actual fresh pineapple, you're eating that fruit and this a pineapple in a can that with all the syrup and stuff. Ooh, that's right. That's, that's right. right. Really bad. That's why we say watch out for liquid sugar. You're exactly right. The canned right. syrup and all that yeah yeah see that's a can again so that's what we say stay away from the process it's actually very simple you know just shop from the perimeters of the store learn how to cook yourself i was a terrible cook but now i'm teaching cooking classes for kids so you know, i guess i've come far <laughs> so yes yeah. so this has been interesting i will definitely send you a couple things i'm also going to send you a nutrition label reading guide i think you're going to really like it yeah and for yeah. your viewers, I've got a, a, a list of hidden names of sugar. There's 250 names on there. And I have a grocery list for lower sugar food swaps. And you okay. can find me on Instagram, Nancy the Health Coach. So do you have any tips for our, our, our viewers if they're interested in reading the labels? Do you have any tips for them? I would say, you know, less is best. Uh, make sure you can you can pronounce it. It's so simple. And if sugar and salt is the first three ingredients, just don't touch it. Don't touch it. And if the percentage of, you don't want to look at the grams. Well, if you look at the percentage, the daily value, if that number is over 20, so some people have, a lot of people have high blood pressure. So sodium can be really high too. So watch the number of 20. That's the cutoff. Don't buy it if it has 20% or more, especially you'll find that on beans and canned soup. And um, yeah, less is best words you can pronounce. Try to buy the food that doesn't have a label on it. That's why the, you know, the apples and the berries, the, the stuff that you see on the side of the store is the best place. The green light. That's the green light. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, Nancy, for coming on the show today. I really, it's been fun. It's been informative. And there are ways that we can work around this. You've given us some great tips. We're going to post some of these tips that Nancy has and what and what to read if you're interested in finding out. It's going to be included in what we're showing on what we show for the show. OK, and uh, and maybe Nancy can come back another time and we can talk about diabetes because that's what your expertise is. Right. We can talk about a lot of things. I can talk about inflammation, inflammation. <laughs> okay. I do a lot of workshops. Yeah. And my one, my favorite workshop that people love the most is called what the food manufacturers don't want you to know. And we play a little name game trivia and I tell them, why is this bad? Yeah. There's a lot of other uh, tricky things out there and I'll grab food and I'll say, why is this bad? Yep. And of course, I'm going to post how you can get a hold of Nancy. If you want to have a one-on-one -on -one or be part of a group of people that, that are with her to find out, uh, how you can help improve your health by reading labels. Again, thank you. And thank everybody for watching a senior citizens forum today. Thank you. Thank everybody you have me. a great day.